So my question to you, my friend, as we uh, delve into the first topic over here is, can you discuss a particular time in your life in which you benefited greatly from being able to compromise on something that was rather important to you? What jumps in, in my mind quickly is, in my USC career, I fought Frank Trick the, the first time, and I beat him with, with a, a standing red naked choke. Four, five, six months later, Dan Wright calls me and says, Matt, I've got you next op opponent. I said, shoot, 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 Dana, tell me who it is. He goes, Frank Trick. I said, Dana, come on. I can't beat that guy as good as I did, I did before. Let's find someone else. I, I always said yeah, yes to Dana. That's why he was good to me because I, I never said no. But I think so on the second fight, Frank need me in, in the groin and the ref didn't call it. But, you know, Frank felt, felt the cup on, on his knee. But... Frank did then mess up a little bit, and I, I returned him, and I picked him up, and w I, I walked him across the cage because I knew I was in front of his corner. So when I walked him across the cage, I went him in front of my corner so I could hear my cornerman, and he can't hear his. So I dumped him in front of my corner and beat him, beat him bad, bad. But that was the first one of the first times in, in the in the cage. I was mad because he put my cup, but I always tried to keep my brain. So I, I didn't get mad at people. I, I was a, a thinker. So that was the first time that I, I was mad at someone. My question for you today is if it was the last day of your life today, God forbid, who would you call and what would you tell them? My best friend, I call him is this today or two weeks or a year or when is this happening? Uh, it would be, let's say, today. I'd call my best friend as I say, tell this four or five people I love them. I tell her, her I, lo I love her. And she runs everything for me, so I would tell her I appreciate all the all the work she puts into me for 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 just being my friend. So that's beautiful. Man. That really is. Um, and, and there's no doubt I could call her and give her a list of people to call, and she, she would take care of, of of that list. She, we we do things for each other, so there's no doubt in my mind she would t take care of what I I would want to get done. Kelly, according to Webster's Dictionary, tough love is defined as exactly what I described. Could you recall a positive moment in your life? in which you've either received tough love or, or given it? I have four children, ranging from 20 down to 11. And I believe in tough love 100%. Um, it is also that tool, though, that I'm scared to have to really use someday. You know, I've had friends who have had to kick their teenage children out of the home because they were making choices that didn't align with the rest of the family. I pray every day that I don't have to do that but I've seen it play out in such a positive way. I can recall when I was eight or nine years old, my brother was eight years older than me and he was doing hard drugs. My um, mom decided to stage an intervention because I took that with me and learned how to grow and to be a better mom that I am now. You know, my kid's out at prom right now, my son, and. And it was one of those things where we had to have the conversations about, okay, well, you know, if, you, if you're not home tonight by two, then tomorrow, you know, we've got to take this away, that away. So it's tough love all day, every day with kids. Kelly, if, again, if in the first moments of your life, if they included opening credits with a song that we could all hear, what song would you select for your opening credits and why? And if your very last day alive included closing credits with a song that we could all hear, what song would you select and why? But I, I ended up choosing for my opening credits none other than Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. Ooh. And, you know, a lot of people don't know me. You know, they see me and they see this and they see my beautiful family. They don't know that, 
you know, dad denied me at birth. My mom raised me a single mom that my mom died when I was 16. They don't know that my brother ended up dying of a drug overdose. They don't know that I have zero blood family left. Had I known all of that when I was coming into this world, that would totally be my song, my mantra, because I survived. And my husband, same thing. He had a equally as dysfunctional of a, of a life. And we came together and said, you know what? We're gonna stop this right here and we're gonna move forward. Closing becomes a little bit more um, sentimental. I chose uh, Brad Paisley and Dolly Parton's When I Get Where I'm Going. Um, I am a spiritual person and I do believe that I am going to see my family that's no longer with me on the other side. And I'm gonna talk to my grandpa and I'm gonna walk side beside him step for step. and. All the lyrics in that song are so beautiful, but when I get where I'm going and I meet my maker's face, I'm gonna stand forever in his amazing grace. And I just, every time I hear that song, I cry. So that is hands down my closing credit song. David, I just wanna say that I'm so grateful that you and I are on this together. I'm, but you and I have so many parallels in our life and I've known that about us. I We both grew up as child actors. I feel like you and I could sit and talk for oh, the yeah. next three hours oh, and yeah. really shock people and really get to deep things. And I'm just- I will ask the same question to Mr. John O'Hurley. Uh, Mr. O'Hurley, oh. what does it mean to be all in, to fully show up to exploration, learning and opening? If you could please bring up a time in your life in which you were all in. But I, um, I wrote this poem pretty quickly, but I wrote a line in that poem that has stayed with me my entire life. And I think it was I don't think I could ever have been more prophetic for where my life was going to take. In that poem, I wrote this and I said, I am of those I've touched and the best of what they are. And what I meant by that is to say that I've been addicted to great people all my life. It's because I listened to a man who grabbed my arm and looked me straight in the eye back on June 21st, 1991. And he said, John, you got two choices in your life. You can have an ordinary life or you can have an extraordinary life. This is the most important part of the listening to your imagination is that what your imagination tells you to do, you have to do. Uh, guys, Mr. John O'Hurley, uh, the same question, Mr. O'Hurley, if you could go back in time and select one historical figure to help out during their time of need, Good sir, who would it be and why? But I want to tell a specific story that just nails me to my heart. Um, Tim and I were, were the dearest of friends over possibly 20 years. And um, he broke it to me that his wife had uh, pancreatic cancer. And um, as most of you know, pancreatic cancer is, is not survivable. It's 100% fatal. Um, and everybody that knew Tim, everybody that, that knew Stacy, his wife, were just, just so taken by this. And last summer, I invited him to play in one of my charity golf tournaments. And he says, I can't do it. I've got to take Stacy and we're going around the world to check off the boxes of places that she wants to go. And I thought to myself, what a wonderful act. I got a text one morning from NBC Sports and they said, Tim has a brain tumor. And I said, you, you, you've got to be kidding me. And so I called him and I could not get through. Uh, he was at the hospital. Um, he'd had the mass removed and was recovering. And he texted me. And he said, I'm, I'm fine now, I'm good. The, the mass is gone. They think that I can get through this without any trouble and I can get back to taking care of Stacy. That was on a Thursday night. On Friday morning, Tim was dead. Somehow during the night, he'd had an aneurysm of unknown substance or reason and had passed away. It made me think is that we have these remarkable things on our cell phones that still have everybody's telephone number, still has their last messages, 
it still has the last connection to them. And for the longest time, I say to myself, now what do I do with this? What do I do with this? I can't delete it because these people still have a presence in my life. And I found that now, even looking at their telephone number, looking back over my messages, hitting it and hearing their voice, healthy and happy for the last time, changes my life immeasurably.